In this video, we look at how international trade or internationalization, if we want to call it trade, being export, import, and foreign direct investment, we look at how those two items affect Porter's five forces, or contrarily, on the other side, how do Porter's five forces, how do, how do they work with internationalization? So again, here we look at Porter's national diamond framework, which shows us how the items of international trade have and foreign direct investment, how those play off of Porter's five forces. So what we see is that there are three of Porter's five forces that are directly affected. What are those three? It's the threat of competition from potential entrants. So new companies coming on to or into the market. It is the <coughs> rivalry among existing competitors that as well is increased. And why is it increased? Because now there is a threat of excess capacity in the market. What happens when there is excess capacity? That the price of the good being sold is actually lowered because you have all of that excess capacity. You're trying to use up that ex excess capacity. And again, it, uh, it the end result is that the price of the good lowers. When the price of the good lowers, what happens then? Then the actual profit there within the marketplace is reduced as well. And so all companies are now taking a lower um, or a smaller piece of pie due to that lowered profitability in the market. The increased rivalry among existing competitors as well comes from that greater diversity of competitors. So now we've got a lot more competitors out in the market than what we did have when it was just a national market. As well, the bargaining power of buyers is increased. We have a potential of many large or larger buyers than what we had with just a national model. And then as well, there is a greater choice of suppliers for distributors and consumers when you have an international market. When Porter talks to us, Porter talks about a national diamond framework with regard to foreign direct investment. And so that diamond framework was developed to help determine the competitive and the comparative advantage in a particular sector for a particular company or country, I beg your pardon. And so there are four items. They are factor conditions, related and supporting industries, demand conditions, and strategy structure and rivalry. So we'll look at factor conditions first. So these factor conditions are the local strengths in that local market in the specialized resources and technology base. So we can think of um, the, uh, the camera industry in Japan, for example. And when those homegrown resources and capabilities are more important than the natural resources. And here, when we say homegrown resources and capabilities, what we are actually doing is we are talking about that local knowledge rather than the primary materials being oil and gas and um, minerals, that sort of thing. So those that local knowledge there is part of the factor conditions. And then finally, what we also see is the lack of natural resources helps to drive innovation. So our great example is Singapore. So think of how 
Singapore being one of the Asian tigers there, how big is Singapore? What do they have from a natural, from a natural resource perspective? Almost nothing. And so then they have to be involved with trade. So the second item is related and supporting industries. So those are the clusters of closely related industries with critical resources and capabilities. So we think of semiconductors and computers and software in the United States. We can think of the movie business as well, the movie industry. So that could be in LA, it could be in Toronto, it could be in um, Mumbai, for example, in India. It could be in Cairo, in Egypt. So we think of what are those groups there that are those ancillary groups that help to, to promote that particular industry. When we look at our demand conditions, these are what the customer wants, what the customer, the consumer values. And so what does that do? That drives innovation, that drives quality improvement. And so again, we look at our Japanese camera industry to see how that is affected, is that those desires, those needs, those wants for ever increasing, ever more sophisticated camera equipment is, pardon me, is what helps to build that Japanese industry. And then as well, we look at our strategy, structure, and rivalry. So we see that that domestic rivalry, whenever you have domestic rivalry and competition, so think of in Germany, think of the automobile industry. So we've got Audi, we've got Volkswagen, we've got Mercedes there. So we think that that, that does what that those are, they're always trying to one-up each other. There's so much competition. And so that is driving that innovation. That is driving the upgrades. That's driving the efficiency of the actual automobile itself. And then finally, we have the actual graph of Porter's National Diamond Framework. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand this so it's easier for us to see. So we see that we have our firm strategy and rivalry. We have our demand conditions. We have our related and supporting industries. We have our factor conditions. So looking again at our factor conditions, what is that? It's that presence of high quality specialized inputs there for the company. So what are they? They're human resources, they're capital resources. How much money is there and what is that capital structure? What is the, how easy is it to move money across? We look at physical infrastructure, administrative infrastructure. So registration and permits. We look at information infrastructure. How much data do we have? Um, is, is it a closed environment a, uh, or, or is it an open environment? How much are we able to see what's going on? Scientific and technological infrastructure, what about the patents that are going on there? What about those natural resources that do come into play? So those factor conditions, we're calling that what input conditions. Next, we have the demand conditions, so directly opposing. So what is that? That is that sophisticated, again, think of our, think of the Japanese cameras. So that sophisticated local customer who wants those new, ever-increasing, innovative um, properties to the particular good or service. So that local customer need does what anticipates the needs in other markets. So if we get that, if we're able to satisfy that sophisticated local customer, then we can spread those goods out as well with those innovations to the rest of the world. So that unusual local demand there for those specialized segments will help us to do what? To serve the, the, the rest of the world's market. So we also look at our firm strategy and rivalry. We look at 
what is it that is encouraging productivity being perhaps the incentive for capital investment? So let's say tax abatements, for example, for X numbers of years, if you happen to have a factory in a particular location or a particular company, what do we have as far as intellectual property protection as well? How well is someone's ideas being protected? What other incentives, what me, might we have to have direct foreign investment? Uh, we look at, again, that local competition there to help us to, to refine our product. And then finally, we look at what are those related and supporting industries that are, that are there to support our particular product or service. So, Again, looking at the movie industry, for example, and so looking at the cameras, looking at the people with that specialized know-how, looking at set design, looking at costume design, looking at um, the that that ability to to edit the um, the the film, looking at all of those things that are involved with the business and so those uh, think of silicon valley and all of the little ancillary uh suppliers that are there working to to uh, build that but as well there are two things that porter acknowledges one is the government. Now we have spoken about the government and so what those regulations are, what the tax regulations are, or what the uh, barriers for entry are from an ownership perspective. So there is certainly, and, and keep not only is it current, but looking at what could take place in the future, how volatile is it? Is, uh, is it apt to move quickly or is there a long-term wait? Uh, that things do not move very quickly at all, but being able to anticipate and manage those government regulations. But Porter as well, notice this, Porter as well does acknowledge that there is also a, an element of chance. There's always an element of chance, an element of luck where you are uh, and, and, and look at other businesses look at other um, foreign businesses that are there, how well do they survive? What types of issues do they run into? What is the environment looking like? Is it Does it seem to be friendly and open-armed? Do people like the American, if it is an American, for example, this is a, I guess, an, uh, uh, an American-centric, egocentric thought, but do they like Americans? What what's do they like our politics do they like our people are we seen as the ugly american for example so there is an, an element of chance but porter's national diamond framework porter says apart from the five forces that are affected so those three five forces that are affected being our, um, if I can go back here, our looking at our uh, rivalry there among the individuals, looking at our threat of new entrants, looking at our buyer power, how those have increased, but as well, now we need to consider what is from a firm strategy and rivalry standpoint, from demand condition standpoint, from related and supporting industry standpoint, and from factor or input conditions, these as well come together with being able to manage the government and as well, a bit of good luck.